This is Twit. Okay, uh, last Tuesday, the 28th, between Christmas and New Year's, the illustrious, <laughs> maybe a little less lustrous than before, Apache Software Foundation released another batch of log 4j patches batch because they've got you know java 5 6 7 8 still or i guess 6 7 and 8 i think 5 finally <laughs> completely bit the bullet but uh addressing yet another arbitrary code execution flaw which has been discovered in blog 4j which can again be used by bad guys to run their malicious code on vulnerable machines <clears throat> making this the fifth security shortcoming to be discovered in Log4j in the span of a month. And, you know, I, I suggest more than anything, this again highlights you know, the fact that we keep finding problems. What happens when really smart hackers carefully examine code that really smart hackers haven't yet carefully examined? Uh, they're going to find things. So, you know, writing code that works is entirely different from writing code which is secure. They're really distinct uh, and, you know, completely separate goals. One is easy. The other is surprisingly difficult and sets the bar far higher. Um, you know, it's possible. And I think one of the reasons is you don't really get credit for writing secure code, right? You know, it's possible to directly see features. And so those get bullet points. And of course, everyone says, oh, it's super secure. But you can't see a lack of security in the implementation of those features. So it doesn't really have to happen until problems arise. So the good news is the CVSS severity score in this fifth case, and like, you know, those more recent ones, keeps dropping with these successive discoveries. None of these follow-on uh, problems that have since been fixed uh, sport that initially eye-popping 10.0 <laughs> that we had. Uh, this latest one got a CVSS of 6.6. Um, and... All of the Log4j versions which precede it from 2.0 Alpha 7 through 2.17.0 for Java 8 are vulnerable. So once again, they all need to get fixed. And, you know, this is the problem with these rolling updates more than anything else is that it's easy to say, oh, we found another problem. Everybody should fix it. But as we talked about, thanks to Google's research about the depth of of the dependency tree of the, the of the Java libraries which depend upon this, this is a nightmare. So uh, you need to go if you know, anybody who's in charge of this, or if you're digging in to see what dependencies are important, uh, two point one seven point zero now needs to be 2.17.1. So it was a, you know, a, a dot release. Um, and although Apache didn't acknowledge the researcher who reported the issue, checkmark security researcher um, uh, Yaniv Nizri has claimed credit, and I'm sure it's due, for reporting the vulnerability to Apache. And this was impressive. The day before... Their release last Monday, the twenty seventh. So it took them like no time. One day that th this this two point seventeen point one was released. The next day, uh, he has published a detailed blog posting to back up his claim that it was he who provided this. He said the complexity of this vulnerability is higher than the, well, of course, because it, be, it would be hard for it to be much lower. Uh, he said it's higher than the original CVE 2021-44228. Since it requires the attacker, he wrote, to have control over the configuration, unlike logback, in Log4j, there is a feature to load a remote configuration file of course, <laughs> why wouldn't there be? My Lord. Or to configure the logger through the code. 
So an arbitrary code execution could be achieved with a man-in-the-middle attack, for example, user input ending up in a vulnerable configuration variable or modifying the config file. In other words, yet another feature that Log4j probably didn't ever need, which created yet another vulnerability that we also wish we didn't have. Now we don't, but it's still a big nightmare. The problem, as I was just saying, is, you know, the need to keep all the affected libraries within the entire sprawling, somewhere between seven and nine layer deep Java dependency tree updated with the latest release. Um, and this has made so much more problematical, problematical, problematic, <clears throat> when Apache needs to keep updating their patches as like new issues be like this is increasingly small right so still it needs to get fixed so it's a mess uh the developer and security communities which have been doing their best to like you know stay current <laughs> are getting a little stretched feeling they reacted to this latest news which was first disclosed not even by Apache, but by Nisri's own public tweet with an explosion of reaction traffic. One user replied, I hope this is a joke. I hope so much. Another tweeted, we are long, in all caps, past the point where the only responsible thing to do is put up a giant flashing neon sign that reads, Log4j cannot be fixed. <laughs> Do not use it for anything. And even uh, Kevin Beaumont, who tweets as Gossy the Dog, labeled the instance another, quote, failed Log4j disclosure in motion because no time was given to allow people to patch this before Nisri, you know, completely disclosed how this could be abused. Maybe that was part of what got Apache off the dime and immediately put put out 2.17.1, uh, you know, in between Christmas and New Year's. They weren't waiting. But again, the problem is it's one thing for Apache to say, hey, we've uh, changed our minds <laughs> about 2.17.0. Uh, just kidding. We, now you need 2.17.1. Getting it, like, actually out is a huge problem. Um, and, you know, during these past few weeks, we've really been treated to a ringside seat to observe everything that's wrong with the current way software is being built, maintained, secured, and deployed. And, well, and after deployment, it's management. Uh, for the most part, the system works. And, you know, in a fairness, what it does is truly amazing. The ability to openly and freely build upon the work of others creates incredible economies. But it is nevertheless a brittle system which breaks down the moment something as ubiquitous as Log4j being found to be untrustworthy and in fact <laughs> very readily exploitable, thus the 10.0 uh, occurs. So... We're not done with this yet. Sometime um, I would love to spend some time with you <clears throat> talking about what would one do if one wanted to write secure software? What is there a is there a process or is it just a mindset? You know, do you, do you have to have to think like a bad guy to you know think about all the ways this could be abused? You know, um, now's as good a time as any. Uh, you we, you and I have often talked about this really interesting phenomenon that anyone coding has experienced where you can't see your own mistakes. Yeah. You, you, you just can't. And you know, and it's not ego. It's not that you, I mean, I, I don't have any ego. My all, everybody who follows me in the, in the news group and who watched me, you know, nail every bug that squirrel had and is watching me do the same thing for, for spin, right? I want to find these problems. I'm, I'm, yeah. I, there's no yeah. denial anywhere. Yeah. And, but you and can't so, see them. You can look and look and look. It, Exactly. This is why the, in, in the business, the process is usually involves code review by your peers, where you 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 say, well, look at my code and I'll look at your code. Um, 
it's hard to do it in your in 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 your solitary. You know. So yes, I, and I would I, I would in I would say I would use a word different than hard. I mean, well nigh impossible. Yeah. It's I, and this has happened to me where. I, I look at the at a at a function which I know is broken, and I look at it again, and I read it, knowing that there's a problem, which increases my focus, because I was like, okay, there's a problem here somewhere. So there's no longer a presumption that it's pristine. It's okay. There's something evil hiding, and so that gives you a one like change of attitude, which is valuable. And often that's all it takes, you know, and I've, I've, I've wondered about that phenomenon that when, when the compiler finds a, or the assembler in my case, finds a bug, I'll go back to the code I just wrote and go, ah, you know, it's like, it's like just being told, no, it's, it's like, then I'll look at it th <laughs> thinking, okay, wrong and i'll go oh of course look at that how could i have done that and then i'll fix it well I, why didn't i see it before i hit the assemble button i don't know but being told no that that helps me to go oh but so but despite all of that even knowing that there's like a problem i can't see it will sometimes be s single stepping through the algorithm until i hit the thing and i go Oh, I mean, it's like you, it has to be just rubbed in your face before you see it. And, and so I, Leo, I think that it's this concept of a red team. What I would say is that somebody other than the author or the team, cause you know, you know, maybe other team members could like cross check each other's code, but, but somebody is going to find the problem. Who do you want that to be? And, and and so it's it's why I really think that this the when in, in the case of log four j the that horrible initial ten point zero drew the the interested focus of a bunch of other talented security aware coders and there is. There certainly is something to being to this idea of having like a higher level, like a security trained coder who's just seen all the things that can be done wrong and and looks at code from a from not from the standpoint of assuming it's right, but in like challenging every assumption that the that that the original coder made about what his code was going to do and and it's oh my god it's far more laborious to to do that than it is just to make it work if assuming that all the conditions are what you want them to be it's it's a completely different approach but i i think the idea of a red team of of having a a i mean and and, and really that's what uh bounties are right bounties yeah. are yeah. P paying good guys to find the problems you and your c enterprise and your coders cannot find and no one's going to do it for free i mean it's it's sort of the f it's the failing of the open source effort right i mean it's the it's that that wonderful pyramid of blocks resting on one little toothpick down at the bottom it's like you know some unpaid guy in some far off land who no one's ever met um and yet we're all dependent upon them, you know, and it's thankless. Um, I did, uh, I, there, were, there was a plea from Wikipedia over the holidays. I'm a, I'm in a, I, I do $10 a month because I just, I want to support them. Absolutely. And I wish yeah. there were some, some way of asso associating my identity with that. So that, cause I feel guilty. I know I get bugged by, <laughs> I <know>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't feel guilty. But, I know I'm giving them yeah. money. So I just, like, yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. Uh, and, and, and the guy that does tree style tabs, which I, which I also use every week. I, I depend upon it on, in Firefox, you know, he was begging for some money. So I gave him some, um, but it's still, most of this open source stuff is just done by hobbyists because, you know, they're well-meaning, but they're often not security trained. You know, open SSL is a disaster until it finally got, you know, deeply looked at, as we talked about years ago, and all kinds of problems were found with it. And in fact, you know, as, as we also said, 
Um, Amazon just wrote their own from scratch. They said, forget that. We, you, you can't even understand this spaghetti, you know, what, it, what this thing has turned into over time. So we're just going to, you know, TLS isn't that hard. We're just going to do one. And, you know, they did, which was like, what was it, t- one, one twentieth the size and had all the same functions, you know, but just none of the extra cruft that had, you know, the barnacles that had grown onto it over time. So I, I just, I think that, the, the one one solution, and, we, and we've also talked about this, is t- taking C out of <laughs> out of people's hands, uh, you know, because it's it is it's still the the most popular solution, and it is just powerfully dangerous. I mean, it is it is so so dangerous, and in fact, um, it's probably the what caused the naming. Of this podcast, December thirty third, as we'll be getting. Oh, to. interesting! Uh, yeah, it's that kind of problem. Yeah, I so, think we are we are moving towards safer languages. Uh, yep, which you know kind of nudge the programmer in the right direction, but that's only a certain kind of flaw. And then there's higher level stuff that can happen that you just have to kind of. I don't know. I think you have to have a mindset. Well, well and just... we have Microsoft. We have Microsoft uh, wondering whether it's necessary to have the deep optimization. Where they right. noticed that Chromium is having all of its pro- half right. of its problems come from the the, the super the, the secure deep mode optimization. Yeah, you know we've got processors. You have to you know pour liquid it's helium pretty, on them pretty in hard order to keep them yeah. you know yeah. operating. Yeah, you know we just don't need that level of optimization anymore. No. So no. yeah, good. It's a good subject. I'd love to talk more about that over uh, over time. Yeah, yeah. making really your is. software it just, it's, more secure. Yeah. Yeah. And and the problem is budget and time. I mean, I'm living in this world where I don't have anybody telling me that I have to ship anything on it by a certain date. And if you do, everything changes because nothing ever happens in the at, at, in the time scale that you expect it to. Right. It just doesn't. You and you end up having yeah. to ship stuff. What is it? My, you know, we hear Paul and Mary Joe talk about it. Oh yeah. Uh, Windows, th- there's 10,000 bugs, and they shipped it. It's like, what? <laughs>